afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Actually, it's good evening right now. We're pulling a late night. Um, I've got to do some samples over here with some epoxy, but before I did that, I wanted to do our part two of what we were talking about earlier today, which was this ductile tearing and how we incorporate what we see in metals to uh, what we want to use in concrete. And the difference being when a, a steel or aluminum fail, it's more of a tearing slow failure, or ductile failure, or tougher failure compared to your concrete which is more of a ceramic type failure and what we did over here is we, we drew out what you would see from your different types of cracks first in a ceramic like material and then a more ductile like material and what we learned is that both cracks have a localized stress which is going to be bit larger than our applied stress and if we look at the equation which isn't up here anymore it's the applied stress plus uh, another factor of this applied stress times the square root of our crack length over two times our radius of our crack so that extra portion means that that localized stress is greater than the applied stress and the uh, stress of the material here that's why we get this atomic dislocation and we start getting the shearing of not only atoms but bonds but also the planes that those bonds reside now we see that with our brittle or catastrophic like failure now when it comes to our ductile like failure the difference being is you have particulates in there within that, that zone of failure that actually blunt or dull that localized stress and cause a dampening of that localized stress that would propagate through the atomic bonds and the atomic planes. And that's what makes materials like plastics and metals so much more ductile is that they have that capacity to absorb that localized stress to stop the propagation of that crack. So as you see here in our catastrophic failure, that crack propagation is going to continue as it splits bonds and planes apart. But because we have these, um, uh, I guess you can call them impurities um, that uh, absorb some of the catastrophic loads that would cause the slippage or the breaking of those atomic bonds and those planes, then that localized stress is brought down until that localized stress is no longer greater than the stress of the material that is being applied. Uh, and then what ends up happening is the voids link up in that plastic zone and instead of us having a very sharp crack and a very tight radius which blows up that localized stress, we start increasing the size of that, that crack radius and that brings down our localized stress until it's no longer larger than the stress of the material or the capacity of the material, excuse me. So what we want to do is we want to take this concept, or excuse me, this concept that we see in tougher materials, more ductile materials, and apply it here in concrete so we can create a material that doesn't respond as catastrophically to applied loads in a very catastrophic failure, very instantaneous failure like a ceramic material, and change it over to a tougher, and more ductile material like we see with our metals and our plastics. So this was part two. Uh, we're going to jump into part three here in a little bit uh, to talk about how we can take this concept into concrete and what materials we can use. Hope you learned something off of this. If you've got any questions, concerns, comments, don't forget to throw them, post them, direct message us. Uh, have an awesome day. Go concrete, beat asphalt.